How's it going, pilots? I hope everyone is having a beautiful day. I'm talking about the pedostatic system today. I've already made videos on the altimeter, how the altimeter works, and how the airspeed indicator works. So the only other instrument I haven't covered as part of the pedostatic system is the vertical speed indicator, or VSI. So how does it work? Well, it looks just like an altimeter in that it's got a aneroid wafer or diaphragm that expands and contracts, spinning a gear system, which then of course spins the dial on the face of the instrument. It's different than the altimeter in that the altimeter had a gas, the, these uh, aneroid wafers or diaphragms were completely sealed and inside was a gas at sea level pressure. In the VSI, the static source goes directly into the diaphragm. So inside the diaphragm, you have static air. Also, there is a nozzle on the vertical speed indicator and this nozzle lets in static air to surround the wafer. So you have static air inside the wafer and static air outside the wafer. When static, when the static air inside the wafer is higher than the static air outside the, the wafer, so you have higher pressure inside than outside, that higher pressure, pressure wants to get out of the wafer, makes it expand, and then the opposite is true when that pressure inside the wafer is lower than the pressure outside the wafer, the pressure outside wants to get in and so it creates a force on the outside making it contract. So how do you get different static pressure on the outside than static pressure on the inside? Well, it all has to do with this nozzle down here. So the static air that goes into the static source is unmetered. It goes in, it's unhindered. It goes in at its normal rate. Nothing's blocking it. It goes in and it fills up that wafer. Now this nozzle is such that it is metered. And so the, the static air enters at a slower rate. So when you're climbing or descending, the pressure is rapidly changing with altitude. The static source picks that up right away. So the wafer reacts, the, the pressure inside the wafer reacts right away. But because this nozzle is metered, there's a lag to how the pressure inside the instrument surrounding the wafer reacts. Now the best way to describe this is with an example. So in this example, we have an aircraft climbing. The aircraft starts down here at altitude number one and pressure number one and climbs up here to altitude number two and pressure number two. Now we all know that the altitude goes up. As the altitude goes up, the pressure goes down. So P1 is greater than P2. The pressure down here is greater than pressure down two. Uh, sorry, in the pressure up there at pressure two. So down here at pressure one, before the climb, we have pressure number one going inside and filling up the wafer. Okay, so you have pressure number one inside the wafer. You also have pressure going in through this metered nozzle into the instrument. So the aircraft is stable. Let's say you're circling at an altitude. Okay, so this wafer is not going to move. The VSI is going to be at zero. Now, up here, during your climb, you're gonna be at a higher altitude, so your pressure is going to go down. Pressure number two is going to go down. So, because now pressure number two outside the instrument is lower than pressure number one, the air inside the wafer is going to go out of the static source, and then until you reach pressure number two, in the wafer. So since pressure number one is bigger, you had pressure number one inside the wafer, then you climbed to pressure number two. So it some air went out of the static source, bringing the pressure inside the wafer to pressure number two. So now the pressure inside and surrounding the wafer wants to do the same thing, but it can't leave at the same rate as the pressure inside the wafer can. So that creates, a, for a moment in time, that creates a pressure difference where the pressure here surrounding the wafer is going to be somewhere between pressure number two and pressure number one. So it's gonna be bigger than pressure number two, which inside the wafer, it has already gotten right away it got to pressure number two up at altitude number two. 
but it's still going to be smaller than pressure number one because a little bit has leaked out, okay? But it's at a slower rate. So because of this differential, because pressure number two is smaller than pressure out here, it's going to exert a force on the outside of the wafer causing the wafer to contract because the pressure outside is higher than the pressure inside. And that's going to make the dial go up and show a climb. Now, if you were to then level out at this altitude and pressure, eventually, let me clear up some of this, eventually all the air, once you allow the time, all the air inside of here would exit out of the metered hole and it would stabilize to pressure two. And once it was the same, you'd have pressure two inside the wafer, pressure two outside. It would no longer be contracting the wafer and this dial would go back down to zero and show VSI of zero once you stabilize. So um, because of this metered uh, port, it basically makes the pressure in here uh, lag behind the pressure inside the wafer. And that is how it gives you a vertical speed indication. Hopefully this all made sense to everybody. If you have any questions, please subscribe and comment below and please subscribe to me on Instagram at part period time period pilot. Hope everyone has a great day and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks.